If you've come looking for a specific enchantment, I've divided this video into segments for ease of access. If you want to know what the absolute best set of enchantments to get on your weapon is, check the pinned comments and I'll try and keep an updated top tier weapon right there. However, not all of those enchantments are entirely necessary, like some of them don't even do that much. But if you like grinding and you don't want to think about it, that set of enchantments should do you well. And finally, if you've come wanting to know what every single weapon enchantment does, Get ready for your brain to be melted with immense knowledge. Starting with vanilla enchantments, Sharpness has a max level of 6 since there's an ancient tome you can use on it, and has 5 different variations. Sharpness itself does a max of 3.5 additional damage at level 6. Lesser Sharpness does a max of 1.5 damage at level 5. Advanced Sharpness does a max of plus 6 damage at level 5. And Supreme Sharpness does a max of plus 12 damage at level 5. Since none of the other variations of Sharpness have Ancient Tomes, Sharpness is the only one that can hit level 6. Reinforced Sharpness is another variation of Sharpness, but it's weird because it doesn't go on swords, it goes on axes, shovels, and pickaxes. At level 5, it does plus 4.25 damage, however it also has the additional effect of dealing more damage the less armor an enemy has, up to a max of plus 4. So at max, this enchantment can do plus 8.25 damage. Smite has a max level of 6 as it also has an Ancient Tome, has 4 different variations, and deals additional damage only to enemies that have the undead tag. Here's a list of all the enemies in Arlcraft that this enchantment does more damage to. Basically, if it looks like a skeleton or a demon, Smite will probably do more damage to it. You can also see that an enemy is undead by the Rotten Flesh tag next to its name. Smite itself does a max of plus 15 damage at level 6. Lesser Smite does a max of 6.25 damage at level 5. Advanced Smite does a max of 16.25 damage at level 5. And Supreme Smite does a max of plus 25 damage at level 5. Bane of Arthropods has a max level of 6 because of an Ancient Tome, has 4 different variations, and works on the following mobs. This one's a little bit more difficult to tell what it'll work on just by looking at it, because it says it works on bugs, but then some bugs that it should work on, it just doesn't work on. You can also see that the enemy has an arthropod by the spider eye next to its name. Bane of Arthropods itself does a max of 15 damage at level 6. Lesser Bane of Arthropods does a max of 6.25 damage at level 5. Advanced Bane of Arthropods does a max of 16.25 damage at level 5. And Supreme Bane of Arthropods does a max of 25 damage at level 5. Lesser, Advanced, and Supreme Bane of Arthropods all apply a slowness potion effect alongside their damage. Though, unfortunately, the potion effect also is only applied to arthropods. Knockback has a max level of 3 due to an enchantment tome, and has one variation. Knockback 1 knocks enemies 4 blocks away, Knockback 2 knocks enemies 6 blocks away, and Knockback 3 knocks enemies 9 blocks away. Advanced Knockback 1 knocks enemies 5 blocks away, and Advanced Knockback 2 knocks enemies 8 blocks away. Fire Aspect maxes at level 3 again due to an Ancient Tome, and has 4 variants. Fire Aspect itself does a max of 12 ticks of fire damage, Lesser Fire Aspect does a max of 4 ticks of fire damage. Advanced Fire Aspect does a max of 16 ticks of fire damage, and Supreme Fire Aspect does a max of 32 ticks of fire damage. Since enemies take damage from you when you hit them on the first tick of fire damage, just subtract 1 from the numbers and that should be how much damage you deal to the enemy. Sweeping Edge has a max level of 4 due to an Ancient Tome, and does damage to enemies around the target that you hit. At level 1, it does 50% of the damage you deal. At level 2, it does 67% of the damage you deal. At level 3, it does 75% of the damage you deal, and at level 4, it does 80% of the damage you deal. This enchantment is sort of anomalous though, as it only works on swords, longswords, katanas, sabers, all the sentient weapons, and troll weapons. Most enchantments work on all of the Spartan weapons, but this one just doesn't, which is probably because some of the Spartan weapons just have the sweeping effect on them by default. Up next is looting, but this one is a bit weird and convoluted, so I'll try to explain it in the easiest way I can. Looting levels affect three different drop tables. Common drops, unique drops, and equipment drops. For common drops, the enemy will roll what it drops, and then looting will give you an additional looting drop ranging from 0 to whatever your looting level is. So if I had a looting 3 sword and a wither skeleton dropped me 1 coal, looting would give me an additional 0 to 3 coal. 
If the Wither Skeleton dropped me 2 coal, the looting would still be plus 0 to 3 extra coal. Now, common drops probably don't always have a 1 to 1 drop rate with looting level, but for every level in looting you have, it does always increase common drops by a flat amount within a specific random range. Unique drops are affected completely differently than common drops are, and each level of looting affects them completely differently from item to item. To best explain this, this is what a shulker's random looting modifier is for shulker shells, and this is what a wither skeleton's random looting modifier is for wither skeleton skulls. The shulker's base chance of dropping a shulker shell is 50%, and the multiplier raises that by 6.25% every looting level, while the wither's base chance of dropping a wither skeleton skull is 2.5%, and the multiplier raises it by 1% every looting level. And finally, equipment is just the equipment the mob is holding or wearing. The drop rate on these is always raised by 1% per looting level. So onto the actual enchantments themselves, looting has a max level of 4, again due to enchanting tomes, and gives you 1 looting level per level of looting that you have on your weapon. Advanced looting has a max level of 3 and gives you 2 looting levels per enchantment level, and additionally has a 25% chance to add 2 plus your looting level times 2 to additional looting levels on enemies that you kill. This means that Advanced Looting 3 gives you 6 looting levels by default and has a 25% chance to put you to level 14 looting. So onto all the extra enchantments, Vampirism has a max level of 2 and has a 25% times level chance to heal you half a heart every time you hit an enemy. This is pretty helpful early game and possibly mid game, but past that it's really not useful and you don't need it. Lifesteal on the other hand has a max level of 2 and gives you a 5 plus 5 times your level percent increase to your damage. Additionally, it gives you 2.5 plus 2.5 times your level lifesteal from physical attacks. The increased damage caps at 15% and the lifesteal caps at 7.5%. This is definitely a lot more than half a heart per hit and it isn't a 40% chance to trigger, it just always happens. Spellbreaker has a max level of 5 and does 0.5 times your level additional damage per potion effect on an enemy and plus 1.5 times your level additional damage on witches and evokers. At level 5, it's plus 2.5 damage per potion effect on an enemy and plus 7.5 damage on witches and evokers. Blessed Edge has a max level of 5 and gives you 1 times your level increased damage to undead enemies. This damage goes up to plus 5, which is worse than level 5 Lesser Smite. However, it also heals you the level of the enchantment divided by 2 health upon hitting an enemy when your weapon swing is fully recharged. Water Aspect has a max level of 5 and deals 1.5 times the level of the enchantment additional damage to endermen, blazes, and magma cubes to a max of 7.5. It also does an additional 0.75 times the level additional damage to enemies that are in the water to a max of 3.75 and 0.075 additional damage if you're in the water to a max of 3.75. Basically, if you're attacking a magma cube that's in the water and you're also in the water, it takes plus 15 damage at water aspect 5. Diffusing Edge has a max level of 5 and deals 2 times your level additional damage to creepers to a max of 10 damage. Additionally, it has a 5% times level chance to diffuse creepers per hit to a max of 25% at level 5. And diffuse creepers make the noise of blowing up, but they just do this and don't move until you move far enough out of range for them to aggro you again. In which case they do it again. What exactly is the point of this enchantment? I have no idea. I mean, it's kind of funny though. Inhumane has a max level of 5 and deals 2.5 times your level increased damage to illager type enemies. It also applies weakness 2 to them for 70 plus 10 times your level in game ticks. Since 20 ticks are in a second, Inhumane 5 applies weakness 2 to illagers for around 6 seconds. Butchering has a max level of 5 and deals 1 times your level additional damage to vanilla animals. Plus 5 damage to animals is pretty top tier honestly. Flinging has a max level of 2 and is similar to knockback except it knocks enemies in a vertical motion. Flinging 1 knocks enemies around 2 blocks into the air while flinging 2 knocks enemies around 4 blocks into the air. Fling, which is an entirely different enchantment with basically the same name, is almost the same as flinging. 
It has a max level of 2, and at level 1, it knocks enemies around 2.5 blocks into the air, and at level 2, it knocks enemies 5 blocks into the air. Fiery Edge has a max level of 2, and ignites enemies for 6 times your level fire ticks. It does function slightly different to Fire Aspect though, as it gives you a 5% times level chance to reduce the enemy's iframes after every hit. Iframes are just short for invulnerability frames, so by reducing them it means that the entity can get hit again sooner or even immediately. Education has a max level of 3 and gives you 1 plus 0.5 times level times increased XP from non-boss enemies. Basically at level 3, education would be giving you 2.5 times your normal XP. Adept on the other hand has a max level of 3 and gives you 1 plus 0.15 times level multiplied XP on non-bosses and 1 plus 0.5 times level multiplied XP on bosses. Afterward, it also gives you 2 plus the level flat XP on each kill. Arc Slash has a max level of 3 and gives you 20 times your level sweeping damage against nearby enemies, to a max of 60% sweeping damage. What separates it from Sweeping Edge is that it doesn't rely on weapon cooldown to work. The pros and cons here are that Arc Slash does less damage than Sweeping Edge, however it's compatible with quite a few more weapons. Reviled Blade deals your level divided by 8 times additional damage to enemies according to their health percent. At level 4, it'll deal no additional damage to enemies at full health and 1.5 times damage to enemies with no health. All the damage in between is scaled linearly, so an enemy with 50% health is going to take times 1.25 damage. Critical Strike has a max level of 4 and it works pretty weirdly. This is the equation the mod uses to calculate the chance for this to trigger. Here's the respective odds to trigger per hit at level 1 and level 4. And this is the equation it uses to calculate the additional damage you deal on a critical strike. To summarize all this confusing math, on average, with critical strike 4, 1 in every 6 crits will be a critical strike crit. You'll know you hit one of these by this sound in game. For every critical hit you get that's not a critical strike crit, the odds of getting a critical strike crit on your next crit will be increased. Basically, to summarize this all even more, there's a 1 in 5 chance of you hitting a critical hit in the first place, and a 1 in 6 chance of that critical hit being a critical strike crit at max level. This averages to about a 1 in 30 chance of actually ever receiving any benefit from this enchantment, so in terms of boosting your DPS, it's probably worse than Reviled Blade. Mortalitas has a max level of 8 and deals a fraction of 1 times your level damage per mob you have killed. In order for Mortalitas to deal its full damage, its damage will be increased for every mob you kill up to 160 mobs, in which case it'll be dealing its full damage. So at level 1, one mob killed means you'll be doing 1 160th of 1 damage, and at level 8, with 160 kills on the weapon already, it'll just be doing plus 8 damage. Ash Destroyer has a max level of 5, and multiplies the damage you do by 1 plus 0.2 times the level if the enemy is on fire. So Ash Destroyer 5 will be doing 2 times damage to anything that's on fire. This is a pretty huge boost of damage considering this enchantment is added after pretty much every other enchantment, so it's no wonder you see it in pretty much every max weapon build. However, in 2.10 it will be nerfed, and instead of doing 2 times damage at max level, it'll be doing 1.5 times damage at max level. Though it's still way better than Reviled Blade and Critical Strike, so people will probably still use it over everything else. Luck Magnification has a max level of 2, and gives you the luck potion effect according to the enchantment's level, if it's in your main hand or your offhand. So Luck Magnification 2 will give you luck 2 for as long as you hold the weapon out. For every point you have in luck, via potion effects or other equipment, the loot that you get from chests that are randomized or not pre-generated has boosted odds at giving you rare items. That's what luck typically does, however, if you're equipping a luck magnification in your main hand, each luck point is then also equivalent to a looting level and increases your critical damage. So if I had an advanced looting 3 sword with luck magnification 2 on it, and my looting rolled a 14, luck magnification would increase that to a 16, and any other luck that I have additionally 
would raise it even further. Swifter Slashes has a max level of 5 and gives you a 20% times level increase to your attack speed, as well as a 2% times your level chance to reduce the enemy's iframes to 0 on every hit. It even shows a nice little attack speed bonus on your weapon for any weapon that has this enchantment. And Venomed has a max level of 3 and applies Poison and Wither to enemies. The Poison level is equal to the enchantment level and lasts for 30 plus your level times 10 ticks. The Wither level is your level plus 1 and lasts for 30 plus your level times 10 ticks as well. So at max level, it'll be applying Poison 3 and Wither 4 for around 3 seconds. Viper has a max level of 5 and deals 1.25 plus 0.75 times the level of the enchantment damage to poison enemies to a max of 5. Additionally, it does 0.5 plus 0.5 times your level damage to withered enemies to a max of 3. By default, the enchantment also gives you plus 1 damage, so in a best case scenario, it'll be doing plus 9 damage. And Venomed and Viper were practically built together, so if you're getting one, get the other as well. Dark Shadow has a max level of 3, and deals 0.75 times your level damage if both you and your target are in light level 1 or below. At level 3, it also will inflict blindness for 8 seconds. However, given the fact that this enchantment will only be doing plus 2.5 damage in its best situation, and in its best situation you also pretty much have to have night vision active to even see, it's got pretty limited use cases if any at all. Horse Day Combat has a max level of 4 and has a 10% chance to trigger the following potion effects on enemies. The duration and level of these effects are shown here. At level 1 to 2, it'll only inflict slowness and mining fatigue, while at level 3 and 4, it'll inflict slowness, mining fatigue, hunger, and weakness. Freezing has a max level of 3 and has a 10% chance times level to apply slowness and mining fatigue to enemies. If the enemy already has those effects however, it'll just increase the level of those effects and at a high enough level, it freezes the enemies into a block of ice. As soon as the enemy is frozen into the block of ice, it'll take an additional 4.7 increased damage with a 1.1 times multiplier on the damage. The glaring problem with this enchantment is that when enemies freeze, the ice melts and turns into water source blocks. So good luck using this enchantment without griefing your own world. Levitator has a max level of 2 and applies levitation to enemies for 30 plus the level times 12 ticks at level 2 or 3 if the enchantment level is 1 or 2 respectively. Disorientating Blade has a max level of 4 and has a 10% chance to trigger the following. The potion effects level and duration are shown here. At level 1 to 2, it inflicts slowness and nausea, while at level 3 and 4, it inflicts slowness, nausea, and weakness. Additionally, at level 4, it deals 0.25 times additional damage to enemies with the nausea and slowness potion effect. This changes your typical 1.5 times crit damage modifier to a 1.75 times crit damage modifier. Subject Science has a max level of 4 and deals 0.8 plus level times 0.03 additional damage to a max of 2. It also has a 20% chance to create an explosion on every hit that does not grief blocks and deals around 12 damage at level 1 and around 28 damage at level 4 to enemies that are a slab's distance below them. Since the explosion is generated slightly under the mob, it will be considerably weaker to enemies on the same Y level as the mob. Subject English has a max level of 4 and deals 0.8 plus the level times 0.3 additional damage to a max of 2. It also does 3 times your level additional damage to quote unquote smart enemies, which includes villagers, witches, zombie pigmen, iron golems, vindicators, evokers, illusioners, wolves, and snowmen? Somebody's got to explain to me who thought this was smart. Oh, and it also has a 40% chance to silence any of these mobs, which um, I guess if you want a quiet village, you could do that. Subject PE has a max level of 5 and deals 0.75 plus the level times 0.25 damage to a max of 2 and has a 0.85 chance per hit to trigger the following potion effects on yourself. 
Once again, this shows the level and duration of each of these potion effects. At level 1 to 2, it has an 8.5% chance to grant you haste and speed. At level 3 to 4, it adds strength and resistance to those. And at level 5, it adds jump boost and regen to those. So at level 5, it has an 8.5% chance to trigger haste, speed, strength, resistance, jump boost, and regen. Granted, most of these only last for like one second, so you don't really see it happen very often, but I guess it's kind of nice. For all the following weather enchantments, the damage numbers will be shown as if the enchantment was at its max level, as there's a lot of numbers, so it's probably just a lot less confusing if I do it this way. Clear Sky's Favor has a max level of 6, and deals plus 5 damage if there's no weather, minus 3.6 damage if there is weather, and if you're underground, aka under one block, it won't give you the damage boost for no weather, but it'll still give you the negative if there is weather. It also has a 0.75% chance to make it clear weather every hit if you're not under any blocks. Rain's Bestowment has a max level of 6 and does plus 5 damage if it's raining, minus 2 damage if it's not raining, and if you're underground, there will never be any damage change. It also has a 1.8% chance every hit to make it rain if you're not underground. Thunderstorm's Bestowment has a max level of 6 and deals 7.5 damage in a thunderstorm, negative 3 damage if there's no thunderstorm, no damage boost if you're underground and there's a thunderstorm, and if you're underground and there is no thunder, it gives you negative 5.45 damage. It also has a 1.75% chance to make it thunder every hit if you're not underground. Winter's Grace has a max level of 6 and makes you deal plus 5.5 damage with a 15% damage boost and inflicts slowness, weakness, and mining fatigue on the enemies if it's raining and you're in a quote unquote cold biome. Nushi made a list of all the biomes this enchantment works in in vanilla Minecraft. So using this list, it seems like only deserts are places where this enchantment doesn't work. However, if it's not raining, it gives you negative 3.6 damage, and if you're underground, it gives you negative 4.8 damage. This enchantment has a 2.4% chance to make it rain per hit, as long as there are no blocks over your head. Lunar's Blessing has a max level of 5, and gives you negative 2.5 damage during the day, plus 2.5 damage at night, negative 3.75 damage if you're underground at night, an additional negative 2.5 damage if you're underground during the day, and an additional negative 2.5 damage if it's raining. So if you're underground at night and it's raining, you get negative 7.5 damage. Soul's Blessing is the same thing except the day and night stuff are just swapped. Penetration has a max level of 5, and it makes so 10% of your damage times the level is converted into magic damage, to a max of 50%. This magic damage is boosted by stuff like magical focus, however, it does not benefit from lifesteal. It's also weirdly bugged and cancels sweeping edge, among some other things. But as far as magic builds go, this enchantment is pretty useful. Rune Piercing Capabilities, commonly abbreviated as RPC, has a max level of 2 and provides 25% times your level armor penetration. This enchantment is super useful on Lost Cities mobs as they have tons and tons of armor. Parry has a max level of 1 and gives you a 24% chance to block damage and knocks back enemies. It has a weird bug with the cross necklace though that makes so sometimes you lose all your iframes, which pretty much just causes you to instantly die. So if you use parry, don't use the cross necklace, and if you use the cross necklace, don't use parry. This might be patched though in 2.10, so make sure you keep an eye on that. Purging Blade has a max level of 5 and has a 10% plus 6 times your level chance to trigger to a max of 40%. When it triggers, it deals 1.25 plus 0.75 times your level of magic damage to a max of 5, gives you a 1.2 times damage multiplier, and gives you consecutive 50% chances to delete one potion effect from a mob until one of the chances fails. The effects that are deleted aren't true random though, as there is a way to influence which ones get deleted, but that just sort of seems like it's probably a bug. Atomic Deconstructor has a max level of 2 and gives you a 0.1% times the level chance of insta-killing non-boss enemies. It is like 1 in 500 at best, but you'll know when it happens when you hear this sound. 
this enchantment is never to be relied on, it's just kind of a cool extra effect. True Strike has a max level of 1 and gives a 75% chance to negate the evasion enchantment on the opponent, and it protects the user from obtaining Curse of Inaccuracy. So basically, if you're 1v1ing one of your friends and you see that they have enchanted leggings that probably have evasion on them, you should use this enchantment. Unreasonable has a max level of 2 and makes enemies target other enemies within a specific radius depending on the level. At level 1, they target from 6 blocks away, and at level 2, they target up to 8 blocks away. After the mobs aggro each other, neither of them can be involved in being frenzied again. All of that might sound pretty cool, and even pretty useful if you're trying to make a horde of zombies target one enemy. However, it doesn't work on mobs that are targeting you. Which means it works in creative, but it doesn't work in survival on a majority of mobs, if any. Unsheathing has a max level of 1, and makes so if the enchantment is in your hotbar when you're hit, it'll swap to your main hand. There are sometimes bugs that make so this enchantment doesn't work, but you can just drop it and pick it back up, or like, just grab it and put it back in your hotbar, and it'll fix itself. As for Axe exclusive enchantments, Penetrating Edge has a max level of 6, and deals damage equal to the enemy's armor divided by 3 plus 0.5 plus 0.16 per level. So at max level, it would be the enemy's armor divided by 3 plus 1.46 damage. It is important to note, this enchantment does not penetrate armor, it just gives you bonus damage if the enemy has more armor. Purification has a max level of 5, and gives you a 5% times level chance of transforming zombie villagers into villagers, magma cubes into slimes, and zombie pigmen into pigs. It also applies slowness and weakness to undead enemies. Desolator has a max level of 4, and has an 8% times the level chance to give enemies negative resistance. At level 3 and 4, it also applies weakness. At max, Desolator gives negative 3 resistance to the enemy, which makes you can deal 1.45 times damage to them. Disarmament has a max level of 5, and has a 25% chance to apply speed 2 for 1 second, and weakness 255 for 2 plus the level seconds. If this triggers, there's also a 5% times the level chance to disarm the enemy. On average, at max level, 1 in every 20 hits will make the enemy drop their weapon. However, they can pick it back up, so if you're trying to make them drop it, just be ready to catch it. Brutality has a max level of 5, but there was obviously some sort of oversight in the code because it does the exact same thing at every level. It deals 1.25 minus 0.25 times the total number of armor pieces on the target, percent damage to the armor's durability. Additionally, it also does a random number of flat damage between 7 minus the number of armor pieces on the target to 0. So if an enemy is wearing 4 armor pieces, Brutality will deal 0.25% durability damage to each armor piece with each hit, and an additional 0 to 3 damage. Culling has a max level of 3, and is super confusing and weird and doesn't actually work, so we're just gonna skip it. Assassinate is an enchantment specifically for the better survival dagger, and increases the weapon's base backstab damage modifier. Bash is a hammer exclusive enchantment from better survival that increases the weapon's chance of stunning. Disarm is a battle axe exclusive enchantment from better survival that increases the weapon's chance of disarming. And finally, Combo is a nunchuck exclusive better survival enchantment that increases the speed in which your continuous swings hit the damage cap. Basically how nunchucks work is they deal more damage the more they hit enemies in a continuous swing at around 5 hits in the same swing. Any hit past the 5th will always be dealing the same much damage and the same much crit damage. At max level, combo allows nunchucks to hit the cap in 3 hits, so basically it just affects the DPS of your initial 5 hits. For incompatibilities, melee weapon enchantments are like super complicated compared to everything else, so you might have to look at this a bit before you understand what it's doing. Here's a chart by Nushi that displays all of the incompatibilities with X's. 
All of the enchantments here are mostly arranged in their own enchantment groups and what makes sense. Using this, if I wanted Blessed Edge and I wanted to see if it was compatible with Advanced Sharpness, I would just look where the two intersect and see that there's an X there, so they are not compatible. And if I wanted to see if Fiery Edge was compatible with Supreme Fire Aspect, I would find where the two columns intersect and see that there is no X, so they are compatible. As useful as this is for specific enchantments, I wanted to see if I could make weapon crafting a bit easier and a bit more condensed, and I ended up with this. All enchantments in the same boxes are incompatible with one another, and each of the lines represent additional incompatibilities. So if I wanted swifter slashes on my weapon, I could see that it's incompatible with Revile Blade, Knockback, and Blessed Edge. If I wanted Adept, I could see that it's incompatible with Education. If I wanted Education, I could see that it's incompatible with Looting, Advanced Looting, and Adept. And finally, if I wanted Water Aspect, I could see that it's incompatible with Fire Aspect, Fiery Edge, Spellbreaker, Blessed Edge, Penetrating Edge, all forms of sharpness, smite, and bane of arthropods, diffusing, inhumane, and butchering. I also color-coded the text here for axe enchantments and the two weird enchantments, reinforced sharpness and sweeping. All of the individual boxes with no lines have no incompatibilities. However, the weapon exclusive enchantments and better survival are not included in this list, as neither of those have any incompatibilities, so if you want them, go ahead and use them. That pretty much covers everything I wanted to cover in this video, so if there's something in here I got wrong, go ahead and leave a comment so we can get that corrected. And if Shivaxi adds more enchantments in 2.10, I'll be sure to make an updated video on those and any other enchantment changes. This video alone took way more effort than I originally thought it would, but I don't really mind as long as I know it's helping you guys and increasing your quality of life when you play this mod pack. If you like the content here, be sure to like and subscribe, and I also highly recommend subscribing to Nishalm's channel. If you think I know a lot about this mod pack, he knows that times like 10. Now, I know you're all probably thinking, Ooh, My brain is filled with so much knowledge, what do I do? And to that I say, Go spread the word, brother. Let the knowledge that has touched thy brain spring forth and touch the brains of many.